Hello, so for materials you need, wait for yarn, a 6.5 millimeter hook, and some scissors. And it's optional, but recommended stitch markers and a yarning needle. To start off chain four, we're only going to be working in three of the stitches, but I always like to add an extra chain in order to start my work. In the second chain from the hook, half double crochet in each chain. Now you can chain one and turn your work and half double crochet in each stitch. You see me chaining one in between each row. I know this is a preference, you don't always have to do it, but you know I like it too. So now we have a total of three stitches. So to start off, this is making our starting square and we're gonna be working around the outside of this square. So around the outside, you see I'm not going in the normal chains. I'm going to chain one to start the row and we're going to do double crochets all the way around. But after you do the first two stitches and every third stitch on the side, which is kind of acting as the corner, you're going to put three double crochets in the third stitch. So I did one, now I'm going to do two. And once I get to the third one, I'm going to put it all in the same stitch. So that was two, now I'm going to do three. And that kind of is going to start you up for the next row. So now you're going to do two, regular, and then three in one stitch. And you're just going to keep going around for the rest of the row, which is going to give you a total of 20 stitches. Once I get to the end of this row, I cut the yarn and I slip knot it into where we started, the first stitch. And I just tie a knot. Now we're going to grab our other color and what I like to do to switch colors is I make a slip knot and then insert the slip knot, insert my hook and pull the slip knot through in the corner of my square. So now basically what we're going to be doing to keep repeating the square pattern is going around the sides and in each corner we're going to be putting three double crochets. So for this one, you're going to double crochet in the first six stitches and then once you get to that seventh stitch, you're going to put three double crochets in the seventh stitch. And then you repeat that pattern for the rest of the row going all the way around. For the rest of the rows, I really just gauged it, but if you want to mathematically know the exact for each row, you're just increasing like the first number of stitches you do by um, the number four. So like we started off by doing uh, two stitches in each one and then putting three in the third one. And then we went 
to 6 and then we went to 10 and then putting it into the 11th and it just keeps going repeating that pattern for each um, for the rest of the panels for as long as you want it to be another way to check to make sure you're on the right track is each row is going to be increasing by 16 stitches each time so that's also a good way to check If your square is too small on one side, say that it's too wide but it's too short, you can add rows of double crochet equally on each side. So what I do for this, because my square was too wide, well it was wide enough and I want it to be longer, to be taller, I'm going to add two rows of double crochet, alternating the colors each time, switching the colors each row, um, on the top and bottom. So I added a total of four rows to the top and bottom. Once the panels are a good size that you want them, once you measure them against your body, everything looks good, you're going to add the neck part now. So you're going to count how many stitches you have on the top side and subtract the number by 14 and then divide that number by 2. So say if you were to have 70 stitches and you minus 14, it would get you 56 and then divide 56 by 2, you would have 28. So now I double crocheted in 28 stitches, decreasing in the last stitch. And you don't have to decrease number 27 and 28 together, I decreased 28 and 29 together. We just do the decreases to get the slant effect.
So once I got to my last stitch, I did a decrease and I'm going to cut the yarn and chain and tie it off and then switch colors like we did to before. Since we're cutting yarn each time, we don't have to go back and forth. We can just go start at the same side again and switch colors. So you're going to have a total of four double crochet decrease rows, like decrease in the last stitch rows. And so you're just going to repeat this for three more rows. So you finish adding the slant, you're going to double crochet for a total of four rows. Nothing special, just a regular four double crochet rows, making sure you switch colors each time. Then you can repeat for the other side. I started from the center for this side because I thought there was a difference. Like I was really focusing to see if there's a difference between whether you could tell if I crocheted on the back or front side. But then I realized, you know, there really didn't look like there's a difference at all. So you don't have to do this. You can still work from the outside to inside. You're going to repeat the same process for the back panel, but don't start making the neckline because the neckline is different for the back panel. So you want to do the same number of rows as you did for the front panel, for the back panel. Now since this is the back panel, we don't need the slant for the neck, we're just going to crochet 8 rows of double crochet with the same number that you ended with on the front panel sides. So like you can see on the one shoulder side, I ended with, I don't remember the number, but I ended with that number and so I'm just going to double crochet that same number um, on the other side for 8 rows and make sure you're switching colors each time.
as you can see we just have a straight side no slant on this side and you're just going to repeat it the eight rows for the other side The sleeve is similar to the panels that we just made, so if you got that process down, you're good to just skip ahead to the sewing it all together part. But if you want to rewatch it, then that's fine too. So I started by chaining four, second chain from the hook, I half double crocheted in each chain. Now you can chain one and turn your work and half double crochet in each stitch. You see me chaining one in between each row. I know this is a preference, you don't always have to do it, but you know I like to. So now we have a total of three stitches. So to start off, this is making our starting square and we're gonna be working around the outside of this square. So around the outside, you see I'm not going in the normal chains. I'm going to chain one to start the row and we're going to do double crochets all the way around. But after you do the first two stitches and every third stitch on the side, which is kind of acting as the corner, you're going to put three double crochets in the third stitch. So I did one, now I'm going to do two. And once I get to the third one, I'm going to put it all in the same stitch. So that was two, now I'm going to do three. And that kind of is going to start you up for the next row. So now you're going to do two, regular, and then three in one stitch. And you're just going to keep going around for the rest of the row, which is going to give you a total of 20 stitches. Once I get towards the end of this row, I cut the yarn and I slip knot it into where we started, the first stitch, and I just tie a knot. Now we're going to grab our other color and what I like to do to switch colors is I make a slip knot and then insert the slip knot, insert my hook and pull the slip knot through in the corner of my square. So now basically what we're going to be doing to keep repeating the square pattern is going along the sides and in each corner we're going to be putting three double crochets. So for this one, you're going to double crochet in the first six stitches and then once you get to that seventh stitch, you're going to put three double crochets in the seventh stitch. And then you repeat that pattern for the rest of the row going all the way around.
for the rest of the rows, I really just gauged it, but if you want to mathematically know the exact for each row, you're just increasing like the first number of stitches you do by um, the number four. So like we started off by doing uh, two stitches in each one and then putting three in the third one and then we went to six and then we went to ten and then putting it into the eleventh and it just keeps going repeating that pattern for each um, for the rest of the panels for as long as you want it to be another way to check to make sure you're on the right track is each row is going to be increasing by 16 stitches each time so that's also a good way to check If your square is too small on one side, say that it's too wide but it's too short, you can add rows of double crochet equally on each side. So what I do for this, because my square was too wide, well it was wide enough and I want it to be longer, to be taller, I'm going to add two rows of double crochet, alternating the colors each time, switching the colors each row, um, on the top and bottom. So I added a total of four rows to the top and bottom. And you're going to repeat the same process for the other sleeves, making sure you make the same amount of rows for each sleeve. And you want to have two sleeves total if you have two arms. Now we have made all the panels, so you're going to line up your front and back panel and sew the shoulders together. For sewing, if you have a yarning needle, that is the method that I'm going to be using, but you can also slip stitch everything together. So since the top of my shoulders are green, I pulled out my green yarn so that the color is the same, and I lined up the front and back panels along the top. Since we made the same number, it should evenly line up and sew together.
Now we're going to open up the piece and this is where I like to bring out my stitch markers to make sure everything lines up. So you see I'm just opening it up and I'm going to bring out the sleeves and line them up. So it's important to find certain parts that you know want to match up. So the half point of the sleeve, you want it to line up to where the shoulders sew together. So you can count how many stitches you have and put the middle, the half of that number lined up to where the shoulders are, or I just fold it in half because I'm lazy. And that half stitch is where I put a stitch marker. You can see I'm folding in half and checking because you want it to be even for the front and back panels. So I just use the stitch markers as a guide to make sure if I'm sewing too much or sewing too little, I have the stitch markers to just keep me on the right track. But for this one, I actually found out that I have a preference of sewing right side out. So I ended up flipping this later because it just looked nicer. I could see it where I used the tan yarn and I just sewed the pieces together on the right side. But you can honestly look and you can just try on error it, see what you like best to see which side you want to be the bad side and the good side, which side you want to be on the outside or on the inside. Now that the four pieces are all sewn together, you're going to fold this piece in half. So once you folded the piece in half, we're going to start by sewing down the side of the sleeves, making sure the end, which is like where the armpit area is, and the beginning all line up. So once again, I'm using my stitch markers to just make sure everything lines up. And I'm going to be using tan, not tan yarn for the sleeves, and then I'm going to be using green yarn for the body.
once that's all sewn together, you're going to take your green yarn or whatever color you're using for the outside row and sew it together down the side. If you added extra rows at the end, adding height, then I switch colors where I'll do tan with the tan and green with the green towards the end. Once the piece is all sewn together, I like to march, mark which side is the back side because once you add the neck, they kind of look similar, but they're a little different in shape. So I like to mark it by making a little bow in the back. Now where the neck is, I'm going to put a single crochet in each opening around the neck. I like my necklines to be a little tighter and not show as much as my neck and chest area so I put a decrease in each stitch which makes the neckline nice and tight but I would try it on to see if you like how wide the opening is before deciding to put a decrease in each stitch because I've definitely made ones that don't even fit over my head so I would definitely try it on to see if you like it. Say that it is too tight then you could do like a single crochet and then a decrease and just alternate that pattern or even if you like it loose or whatever you can just alter it to what you want. Lastly I just put a half double crochet in each stitch. I typically would use a different method to make ribbing. I would be using a single crochet up and down in the back loop which if you want to check out my other tutorials I've definitely done that for the ribbing of my neck but for this one you know it took a while so I wanted to just finish it off with a half double crochet as the neckline and it ended up looking just fine. Once you're done you can cut your yarn and tie off and smile because you are all done. Thank you so much for watching.